Thank you, Yvonne. Uh, I thank the No Time to Wait organization for this invitation. It is such a joy to be here. And I'm mesmerized about the depth of the discussion so far. Uh, so I'm going to share my screen. Oh my God, exactly like a Brazilian, exactly. I could hear that. <laughs> well, uh, I decided to draw a big picture here uh, and delve the deeper into the debate just after. It's not a technical speech then. I'm going to share some information about the Brazilian context. Um, then I'll talk about the Cinemateca Brasileira's haze days and crisis, and then I'll share some about the audiovisual heritage in Brazil. I am Inês Azengart Menezes, and I worked at the Cinemateca Brasileira from 2016 to 2020, when the government shut it down. Uh, first, I'm going to give some uh, context of the situation in Brazil. The fires in the Amazonia have, have a drastic impact now in the medium and long term, even worldwide. Uh, this is a project that monitors new fires. It's destroying the wildlife already affecting cities far from the forest. Indigenous people who have been facing genocide since colonial times are now threatened in every way by this government. The president is not controlling the COVID-19 pandemic. He's helping the virus in spread instead on purpose causing the escalation of poverty. This chart shows that Brazil is the second country with the highest number of deaths globally. And this, is a this affected more the black population, which is half of the Brazilian people. And because of the brutal colonial past, black people are the poorest. And I present data on femicide and I call attention to the potential under reporting during the pandemic. Another rising rate is racial and religious violence and the, and the shocking rate of apology to Nazism in Brazil, even inside the government. Since before becoming the president, he has been exalting the violent military dictatorships in Latin America. And every aspect in Brazil is collapsing or facing hardships. Once solid institutions are now being corrupted, I call attention to the constant approval of new pesticides, which have a tragic consequence for the land, the fauna, flora, and people. This tweet is an example of the importance of fact-checking agencies, independent news groups, and media activists, especially considering the president's disdain for the truth and human rights in general. And of course, people are reacting nationwide. And I highlight the fierce reaction of indigenous people. But now switching to the Cinema Ataca Brasileira, here are some images from a protest in several Brazilian cities last August when Cinema Ataca Brasileira completed one year shutdown. Here are some leading participants in this fight, a BPA, Brazilian Association of Audiovisual Preservation, and a group of former workers of the Cinemateca Brasileira, which has been out and loud since we went, we went on strike after three months delay in payment in 2020, 2020 uh, and we, we never received those salaries. Protests were organized with uh, unions and various groups, such as the Neighborhood Association, where the Cinemateca is located. Cinemateca has also been the center of numerous online discussions in Brazil and internationally. I'm glad that we are about to watch another one with my Brazilian peers. And regarding the international support, I highlight the video messages from FIAF members. Also, here's the program presented by the Cinemateca Port Portuguesa to raise awareness of the Brazilian one. Now, uh, Cinemateca Brasileira is 75 years old. I used the words of my peer Fabiana, uh, Fabiana Ferreira to summarize the situation of audiovisual heritage in Brazil. 
I'll let you read so I can have some water. And um, the fires at the Cinemateca can illustrate this inconstancy. The first and second fires were in the 50s and 60s. And this was like a large scale destruction. Uh, the third fire was in the 80s. And the Cinemateca Brasileira Hey Days started uh, by the end of the 90s uh, when its current building was inaugurated and it's a former slaughterhouse as you can see uh, in the picture on the right and this golden times went all the way up until 2013 when a crisis hit hard and the outcome of the crisis was the fourth fire in uh, 2016 in the nitrate faults located inside the main installations. And here I make a quick parenthesis to mention the tragic fire of our National Museum in 2018. Uh, then last year, there was a flood in the Leopoldina building, barely reported in the Brazilian news. More than one meter of rain with sewer heavily affected the film and equipment collections. And earlier this year, a fire uh, in the same building destroyed about four tons of documents and some films. These events have horrible consequences for the Brazilian heritage and become a non-healing wound of the institution. And why does Cinemateca matter? Why is so important and relevant for the Brazilian heritage? I will use some programs registered uh, in the Cinemateca's annual report as a reply, as you can see here on the screen. And as, as a sign of the institution's good times, the reports are available from 2008 and, and 2012. Then there was the 2013 crisis, 2014 had a meager report and no document in 2015. Then the 2016 and 17 reports, which curiously had a choice of images with deterioration, maybe as an unconscious illustration of the state of ruin that threatens the institution itself. There was no public report from 2018 onwards a sign of the failure of the management model for the Cinematheque in those years, as the reports have been essential documents for accountability and transparency of the institution's management. And I will present this very quickly, starting with a Programadora Brasil, almost 1,000 films available for association and small venues. Uh, this program have, had an immense importance for promoting Brazilian cinema nationwide. And it was done with uh, this institution, CTAV, that uh, we will discuss it later. But I, uh, I would like to point out this and another project that was made with this partnership. And also, Resgate do Cinema Silencioso, restored titles in Cinemateca lab available in DVDs with a new beautiful soundtrack. And this program of silent films uh, is the second one in this article by Cine Limite, a New York organiza organization sorry, de de dedicated to promoting Brazilian cinema, which I strongly recommend. Another project is Clássicos Errados Nosso Cinema new 35 mil prints for broad circulation. And here is the overwhelming flow chart of the last remaining photochem photochemical lab in Brazil, located at the Cinemateca, actually the last one in South America. Unfortunately, some equipment lacks parts, all need maintenance, and the lab ran out of film stock but I think it's vital that we can picture the lab to its full potential.
this, uh, there are three screens at the Cinemateca Brasileira, and here's a picture of a busy screening on the Kids' Day on the external screen in 2016. Banco de Conteúdos Culturais gathers about 88,000 documents with a large watermark. <laughs> it will probably grow in the following years since Cinemateca has a film-related collection of more than 1 million documents. Cinemateca hosted the 20, 20, 2006 FIAF Congress, which boosted Cinemateca's consul, uh, consolidation, and it was a memorable Congress. I don't know if anyone was there. Please comment on the chat, please. Uh, and Cinemateca translated and published the Portuguese version of the two digital dilemmas. Sibia was an effort to create a national network of audiovisual heritage institutions marked on this map. After the second meeting and a list of required requirements that the government never met, the project was ended. Cinemateca failed to take a leading position in promoting the consolidation of other institutions while very close to the government. But before that, Cinemateca offered short-term courses for technicians of other Brazilian institutions, a brief but essential contribution to the development of those professionals. CLIMA-CB is a climate control system of the humidity and temperature of the vaults. It's continuous and online, a combination of open source soft software and hardware, which initially was intended to be published, but it didn't happen. Uh, I believe the two could be vital for institutions in the global south, and its assembly would be the theme of a lightning talk here that no time to wait. Here's a picture of the team at the Cinemateca when it turned 70 years old, so five years ago. Uh, we were also celebrating the centenary of Cinemateca's founder, Paulo Emilio Salles Gomes. Um, and here I pointed, I pointed out part of the current team, which comprises about 20 people uh, in total. I'm not among them. And some former colleagues who were very active in protests are not among them as well. It's a small team that hopefully will grow soon. Now the current situation. Uh, the Society of Friends of Cinemateca, SAC for short, was created in 1962 and was the institution in charge of the management in the heydays. Uh, it was also entangled in the 2013 crisis and recently became regulated once more. And after legal tender, SAC was selected to run Cinemateca. But now SAC is running the Cinemateca uh, with a three months long emergency contract, which started last November. While the five years long contract regarding the public tender is in its works, but we already know that the budget provided by the government is less than needed. And there, and there are so many challenges, so many challenges. Here are a few. Uh, here are some pretty pictures uh, to symbolize how much we already lost from the early cinema in the following decades. Besides the usual destruction waves, the neglect and the humid tropical climate. And as a result, the range of acetate deterioration in Brazil is much worse than what people are used to. Here are two articles calling attention to movies about to be lost or inaccessible. Oh, uh, the last one from Similimiti. Probably most of, of us know the three legged stool model of digital preservation. Unfortunately, the model by the right suits Brazil best. At the moment, I believe we lack technology, organization, resources at a large scale. Brazil has had a steady development of the audiovisual industry due to a solid funding policy. In 10 years, guess how much of these uh, 721 million uh, reais 
uh, sorry, that's zero, uh, went to any heritage institutions. Uh, well, it's zero. <laughs> While the heritage institutions had to deal with the ever increasing demand for service. The only systematic acquisition of digital born materials uh, was through legal deposit. It was operational at the Cinemateca Brasileira until 2019. Uh, Cinemateca wrote the technical guidelines for cinema and broadcast productions, and the technical guidelines for games were never done. Maybe it would have been developed if the Cinemateca was not shut down last year. And they call attention to the fact that there is no preservation program yet. It's just the original drives and tapes from the producers inert on shelves. Brazil is a country of continental proportion, and there is no a tendency to concentrate resources and concerns in a single institution, which I think it's risky. We have many other collections in several other institutions, but especially re regarding digital born, a significant amount of records outside the scope of any institution. I will talk about this later. Even the most solid institutions Brazil have threatened, such as the National Archive, and this is a petition against the new director, someone with no connection with the archive, educational culture whatsoever. Now switching to the great things to talk about the Brazilian heritage. I want to call attention to the archive lab inside UF, Fluminense Federal University, which offered the first elective course in audio audiovisual preservation 20 years ago, which became part of the curriculum of the students' demand. Here's the International Home Move Festival organized by Deborah Butrusi earlier this year. Um, uh, here's a project to exemplify the recovery of small collections. A meager budget allowed the conservation and digitization of mu uh, folklore, music, and Espírito Santo, a state, Brazilian state. Here are the two Cinematecas represented here today, the Cinemateca Capitolio and Cinemateca of Modern Art Museum in Rio de Janeiro. Both have provocative programs and are crucial for the audiovisual culture in Porto Alegre and Rio de Janeiro. Here's an initiative uh, against the professional imbalance towards black professional and further goals. And this is my absolute darling. It's a repository developed by Brazilian universities, a WordPress plugin easy to use. Besides the widespread use in Brazil because of the pandemic, individuals and institutions from Chile, Greece, Mexico, and the US are using the Tainacan. Its, uh, its documentation is available in Portuguese and English as well. This is one example of the usage. Um, it's the collection of places and people related to the resistance to the military dictatorship. On the right corner, the bottom is former president Dilma Rousseff, who suffered the presidential coup in 2016 when Brazilian democracy started to collapse fast. The Black and indigenous population has been facing annihilation throughout the centuries slavery, colonization, human rights viola violation, precarization of work. And the violence, this violence not in the past. The dissemination of audiovisual technologies had a crucial roles, a role in rising political awareness and activism. For example, I bring the Quebrada Cult, a group of students and teachers from the outskirts and poor areas. This project takes on tremendous relevance when we have such civic ruin with the pandemic. The universities used to be attended only by white people. Then there was the racial quota for poor black indigenous, indigenous people, which resulted in a more balanced university and promoted a tiny change in the structure of a Brazilian society. I call attention to, to one of the members of Quebrada Cult, Chavoso da USP, uh, in the right side. In his latest video, he calls attention to the unofficial and veiled Brazilian apartheid. Many others are creating educational content in different formats, podcasts, videos, uh, probably all this content in private social media platforms. 
the federal government uh, did everything that it could to help, help the virus. Uh, and Brazil's two best vac vaccination campaigns are here, not from any national or local government. They are from a TikToker, Rafael Vicente, who lives in a favela and makes pa parodies with his family, and the funk music by MC Fiotti. It's funny, it's catchy and effective. These are just a few examples of Brazilian culture at its best and outside the scope of any heritage institutions. Brazil was the last country in the West to abolish slavery, and there was no 40 acres and a mule. On the contrary, slavery continued in many forms. Black people are among the poorest, and they have been misrepresented in the audiovisual industry and heritage. Now they also become, became pro protagonists in the audiovisual, I'm oh, sorry. Now they also became protagonists with digital media and social network. And we are failing to preserve that. The mar marginalization of social rights is reflected in the practice of heritage institutions, including the Cinemateca Brasileira. Archive is power, and we cannot perpetuate our dynamics of the last century where production and preservation were around just one economic class. Archival practice reflects society, but also can be components of transformation. Here present the challenge for us to promote the recognition of such productions as elements of audiovisual, audiovisual heritage and promote mechanisms for their preservation remembering that in Brazil, we are late in dealing with the digital in policies, strategies, technologies, and training. Our institutions are so busy with the backlog. In addition to boosting those institutions and programs, maybe we should promote campaigns to raise awareness so the producers also became agents of preserving their content. We have the challenge of instilling an understanding of the importance of preservation. Audiovision can become a vector of changes, constructions, transformations, representation, autonomy, inclusion, education. We need a new dynamic between universities and archive. Perhaps this generates greater representations, helps individuation process with critical thinking, and can be instrumental for denouncing structural racism, uh, a tool for the Black, feminist, L LGBT, QIA plus movements, a response to the ongoing project of erasing uh, the plurality of Brazilian culture. And recalling the iceberg that I presented earlier, most of that hidden part is not with the scope of institutions. Content on the uh, social network, which is more prone to vanish more rapidly and silently. And we should not only look at the original content uploaded by Brazilians. And now we will use uh, the example of TV Manchete, a broadcast company that was active for 16 years until 1999. Its financial bankruptcy led to the collection to be ostracized and probably it's in advanced deterioration. Maybe we have to scrap from YouTube blow res videos uploaded by users which were recording their home VHS sets. The social network at the same time is the canal for the new narrative, creativity, and grassroots movements. It's still, it's also the medium of fake news, which led, led us to the election of the current president, the rotten one, in 2018. He's rotting the system from the inside like a growing disease. Universities, culture, science, health system, and it goes on and on and on. Human life itself. We are not safe in the fake news that allowed it, the, the current, current president to beat Fernanda Haddad, a teacher. Uh, yeah, who was in charge? Yeah. I'm doing that. He was in charge of the policies that made a revolution the Brazilian university starting uh, 15 years ago. Then the current president began to cut fundings and shut university programs in 2019. In times of growing faces, maybe we should ask, ask ourselves what we should be, be doing to fight back. 
or how to preserve this massacre and the response of the Brazilian people. Construction is more complex than destruction. Brazil is crushed and the reparations needs are massive. But we have a few clues where to head to, like the National Judicial Preservation Plan created by the, the ABPA. It's a 2016 document that combines a diagnosis, goals, and a plan of action for the Brazilian audiovisual heritage. Also, I summarize the points I mentioned before and other more. Um, like many, um, I'm in love with the Cinemateca Brasileira, despite its slaughterhouse past, the limited presence of women in the council, its elitist vocation, a timid policy of diversification. Uh, and apart from the ghost of the animals slaughtered there, there are many points to be transformed. I hope that the council is more diverse this time. For the technical team, instability and isolation are old problems uh, resulting in professional evasion, a colossal loss considering how much has been invested in our training. And I wrap up with this meme, meme that proves that I struggle with optimism. 20, 2022 is the election year uh, and those rotten ones are spreading disinformation in social networks. Thank you once again for the invitation and for, and for your time. I thank all the technical team and I wish all the best. Oops. The important overview of all of the, the accomplishments, but also the, the challenges. Um, as I mentioned, um, you're not going to be taking questions because you're joining the panel that's coming up next. Um, without any further delay, I'm going to hand it over to Liz, who will be introducing the panel and, and um, uh, coordinating for the rest of the day. Thanks.